Will you please stand for the reading of God's word and the prayer of illumination? First, let's come to God in prayer. Lord, we stop, we take time to come before you with your people to listen and to look up, to lift up our eyes, our heads, and our hearts to you. Help us, O Lord, to be able to focus on you, to hear what you have to say to us this day, and to apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. From Psalm uh, 121. You don't have to read it with me today because I haven't got it written out for you. So, from Psalm 121, one of the great Psalms of the Reformation uh, that they claim. John Calvin used to begin every worship service by saying, Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. So, hear the word of God. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forevermore. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. You may be seated. The church is not the steeple. The church is not the spire on top of the building. The church's job, though, is to be a steeple, to point up. And when we stop pointing up, we have lost our mission to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. Our job is to point people to Christ, to point people to God, to encourage them in their life. We are not gathered for our own fulfillment. We are gathered to grow and to point up to God. Last week, Betty McIntyre, a longtime member of our church, died. She died of brain cancer, but she also died of a grieving heart because her husband, Haynes, died eight months previously, just eight months ago. And she told, uh, Tracy, she told me, and and Reverend Stewart quoted it in her sermon, uh, or her talk on the funeral, that though she was in pain, Betty would answer to how she was doing by saying, it's okay, I know where I am going, and I'm happy. Betty was looking up. She was looking up, and she's an example of what we are called to do as well. Now, I know that heaven is not just up. I also know the sun does not really rise. But nonetheless, there is a point in which when we think about heaven, it causes us to lift up our heads. And the Bible speaks about that. Psalm 3, uh, the psalmist says, God is the lifter of our heads that encourages us and lifts us In the book of Ezra, it says, My sins weigh me down, so I am too ashamed to lift up my face to the Lord. But Job says, in contrast to that, When I delight in God, I can lift up my face to him. This was Job talking, who who had so many terrible things happen to him. The Psalms talk about the God is the lifter of our hearts, the lifter of our heads. And when, when we have communion, we say, lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord, because God is the one who lifts our hearts up when we are down, and and you know, the word down, 
When you're down, it means you're blue. You're, you're, you're kind of sad. And when you talk to somebody who's sad, they're often looking like this. They're looking down and not looking up. Part of our job as believers in Jesus Christ is to remind people there is more to life than just the mundane, the ordinary. But there is the transcendent that goes up, up and beyond us. And we are called to be encouraged because with God, there's always hope. With God, there's always a reason to persevere. When I think about the stress of life, the things that weigh us down, uh, things like the sadness of Phil Eason's leaving or the cancer of Joe David and Becky Hash or the strife of Christians in Iraq and Syria. It can be easy to be burdened by these things and by the worries of life so that we start looking down. But God calls us to lift up our heads, even in the tough times. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us and gives us hope. And Paul calls us not to be anxious about all these things, but to let our thoughts be thinking of what is noble and true and better. There is hope in Christ. There is forgiveness and strength and grace and love, a reason to lift up our eyes, lift up our heads, lift up our hearts to God. This year, the Mary Presbyterians are going to uh, the Columbia Art Museum, and they're having on display then a display of Norman Rockwell. And I put one of my, my favorite Norman Rockwell pictures on the cover of your bulletin. It's a picture of St. Thomas Church in New York and their steeple tower, the bottom part of their steeple tower. And what you see on that is, is this guy putting up the marquee that says, lift up thine eyes. And you see all the people with their heads down looking at the sidewalk right in front of them. What they're seeing is one step in front of the next step instead of the next step. One piece of sidewalk concrete, the next piece of sidewalk concrete, the next piece of sidewalk concrete. And they're not lifting up their, their eyes. It is easy for us to get caught up in the hurry and the rush, you know, school started, we got to get out, we got to get going. What's your homework? My job, you know, what's going on with that? I've got so much going on, I've got to get caught up. The grandkids are coming, we're getting really busy, we've got to clean the house, we've got to do this, you've got, you got these chore lists to do. It's so easy to get caught up in the hurry of life that all we do is just look down to the next step. And God calls us. Lift up our eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and he made the earth. The almighty God is your help. Lift up your eyes to him. To think about beauty. Think about what is eternal. Think about what is more than the sidewalk and the next step right in front of you. You know, one of the reasons Charleston is called the Holy City, someone, someone called me this week and said, I can't be at church Sunday, I'm going to miss you. And I said, well, I've got a homework assignment for you. Tell me why Charleston is called the Holy City. Charleston is called the Holy City not because it's so moral. <laughs> Charleston is called the Holy City because Charleston has so many steeples in it. And they have these regulations that these high buildings can't be built in Charleston proper. So when you come to Charleston from the harbor, you see all these steeples pointing up. St. Philip's, St. Michael's, First Scots Presbyterian, the Huguenot Church, uh, Grace Episcopal, the Emanuel AME, all these great churches with their huge steeples that point up to heaven to remind us there's more to life and the mundane. Steeples point to God. They point us to remind us to look up. Look up to God.
And this week is National Back to Church Sunday uh, coming up. It is your chance this week to invite somebody to look up, to get beyond themselves, to think about something that's higher than who they are in their lives. To think about what is greater, what is beautiful, what will last forever. Invite somebody, be a steeple, point to God. Point somebody up to lift their heads and their eyes to him. Our job is not to point in. Our job is not just to point at ourselves or to point around. Our job is to point up, to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. Communion is not just about being with each other. Communion is also about being with God and communing with him our maker, that he is the risen Lord and we can be united with him and appreciate him and be grateful for what he has done for us in life. Communion points up to the resurrection, to our hope that there is more to life than just what we see and what we're doing. So we may lift up not only our eyes, not only our heads, But in communion, we're also called to lift up our hearts to the Lord, who is our help and our strength. Amen.